here in the Let's Make Food from Food Kitchen and today I am making a yeast pizza dough. Why yeast? Well, sometimes I don't have the three to five days it takes to make the sourdough pizza. Um, so I compromise and make the yeast dough sometimes and the sourdough pizza other times. And we'll do that in another video down the road. I promise we'll make that sourdough pizza. It is so good but this is good too. I have all of my ingredients laid out and I did that because you don't need to see me measuring things all the time, right? Um, unless you're new. Are you new? Welcome. Um, are you not new? Thanks for being with me. Um, I have everything measured out. I used my scale. Do you have one of these yet? If you don't, please, please, please get one. They're not that expensive. I will put the link to one down below that's kind of a median price um, and know that you can get them um, less expensive than that even, but um, th they're just great tools to have. And for things like bread and pizza doughs and things like that, they will turn out more consistently if you measure your ingredients in grams. I did that um, and then I put this one in a measuring cup so that we could see how much it is. And that is two and a half cups of flour. Yep. And then the water is um, one cup of water. Now keep in mind that your measuring cups are not precise. Um, so that's why using the scale is so important because those measuring cups are going to be different. Um, and then I have our 30 grams of olive oil, which is just shy of three, mm, I would say it's close to two and a half tablespoons. And um, that's the same for the sugar, two and a half tablespoons of sugar. I have 10 grams of salt and I have 16 grams of yeast. So this is going to be about one heaping tablespoon and this is going to be a teaspoon, give or take a tiny little bit. Um, but that's why it's important to measure so that you have preciseness in your dough. The other thing I have is a timer. I'll need it a couple of times with this recipe. So. Um, I'm using a stand mixer today. If you don't have one, powered by Armstrong, totally fine. Use a bowl, um, non-reactive bowl. Don't use plastic, please. The reason we don't use plastic um, is that oils and bacteria and things can leach into that plastic. Any tiny little nick and cut and scratch, even if you don't see it, can leak into there. That's why I always use the glass and um, stainless wherever I can. Um, and then I have my coffee. This isn't for the recipe, this is for me because it's early. I start my pizza dough in the morning for a yeast dough and I'm not fully caffeinated. So um, hopefully this goes well despite that. I am going to go ahead and take my water and pour it in my bowl. And then I'm gonna take my yeast, 16 grams of yeast. That's active dry yeast. And then my um, 30 grams of sugar. Let's set those off. Then. I have a whisk and I'm going to just gently whisk this together so that everything is moist and mixed. I mean, it's gonna look like that basically. We're gonna let this rest for 15 minutes and that's going to feed the yeast. The, the yeast feeds off of the sugar and that's what ends up rising in your dough. I'm gonna set this back on here. And I have my timer already set to 15 minutes and I'm just gonna press start. While that timer's going and our yeast is eating, um, I wanted to talk about a few tools that are commonly used in the pizza industry. I'm sure that you have seen a pizza cutter. Um, it just goes through your pizza really easily. Um, another one is a pizza docker. Have you ever seen one of these? You know when you have a pie recipe and it says poke the holes? That's what this is for pizza, and you could probably use this for pies too. It just rolls and it pokes the holes. And then this is a rolling pin, but this is a French rolling pin. It doesn't have the handles. Um, and I know that you've seen a rolling pin. You're like, Michelle, why are you showing me a rolling pin? Just going over some tools. Um, this is called a pizza screen. Um, and I know it's not something that people commonly have in their kitchen. The holes help crisp up the dough. So if you like your dough to be really crispy, this is the kind of pan that you wanna use. And um, it's called a pizza screen. You can use just a regular pizza pan. Just know that um, your dough might not crisp up as much. Um, alternatively, you can put it on a, um, a pizza stone, which you can get for your personal oven. Um, those are not very, I think you can get one for 20 to $30 for a pizza stone. Um, I have one in my personal kitchen. I didn't bring it here, 
because I don't think that the racks that are in this little oven are gonna hold the weight of that pizza stone. So I skipped that one. Um, and we'll just cook it on the screen. And then my other concern is that it's gonna burn the bottom of my dough because the burners are so much closer than they would be in a large oven. But we're gonna do our best and see how it goes. So those are the basic tools I wanted to just go over really quickly. Um, they have like large cutters that you just rock them back and forth, but I'm not gonna bring that in here either. Um, because I, again, I want this show to be accessible for everyone, which is why I measured things out um, into our measuring cups instead of just a dish so we could convert it to those of you who don't have a scale yet. Um, all right, we have 12 more minutes. I'm gonna go sit and enjoy my coffee. And um, when that's done, I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, my timer just went off. I have had some coffee, not quite enough. I am going to take this off and just see if I can show you that it's foamed up some and that's what we wanted. So I'm going to put this on here and lock it down. There we go. <clears throat> and then it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. The flour is just going to go right on in there. Okay. And I have um, my oil. There we go. Put that in there. And then my salt. And I am just going to add my dough hook here. There we go. And then put this down. I'm going to put it on a low speed and I'm going to let it go for eight to 10 minutes. And I'd like it to form a ball. Um, and then we'll transfer it into our dish. And we'll need to lightly grease our bowl just a tiny bit. If you have a cooking spray, I use my avocado oil. I just very lightly spray it so the dough doesn't stick. So here we go low speed and it's gonna go eight to ten minutes I might come through and scrape the sides of the bowl down um, once it starts to pull together so that all that flour gets mixed in um, and you will be able to tell the consistency of your dough um, is good when it does form that ball if it's sticking to the sides of the bowl and just a, a mess everywhere then you need to make some adjustments um, if it's too hard of a ball then add just a tablespoon of warm water at a time if it's too sticky um, sticking to the sides of the bowl you're gonna want to add um, one tablespoon of flour at a time and let it mix for a minute before you determine whether or not you need to add more um, because sometimes it takes a minute for that flour to get all the way through the dough if you need to you can set a timer for this stage too I'm gonna turn this off for just a second and show you what mine looks like right now Okay, so I'm touching it. It's tacky, but it's not um, staying on my fingers. So I am happy with that. I'm gonna put this back down and turn it back on. And this recipe makes two medium pizzas or one large pizza. So if you need more pizzas or just one pizza, adjust the recipe. All right, I just turned it off. It took about eight minutes. I didn't let it go the full 10 because I didn't feel like it needed to. Just spraying that really lightly. Again, that's my avocado oil. I'm gonna lift this up and take my dough hook off. And then all I'm gonna do is just put it right in my bowl. Okay? Now, that's what it looks like now. And when the time is up, we'll take the towel off and we'll see how much it rose. And I'm just gonna use this lovely towel right here to cover it up, just like so. I'm gonna clean up my mess here and set up for rolling out the dough. We're gonna roll out the dough. I have too much fun sometimes. Okay, um, <clears throat> minimum two hours. It might be ready sooner. It depends on how warm it is where you are. In the winter time, if you live somewhere cold, it might take more time. Um, in a dry, warm, draft-free place, just like we say every time we bake something that has to rise. Um, you don't want that draft and coolness to slow down our rising process. Um, it's starting to cool down here in Tennessee, um, but afternoon, it's still mid 70s, so we're okay. So I'm gonna let this go. Um, I'm gonna say three hours and I'm gonna check on it and see if I'm happy with it. Um, I wouldn't let it go too long because you can overproof your um, dough, whether it's sourdough or a yeast, and then when you bake it, it's not gonna fluff back up. So and we're not looking for a super fluffy dough. I usually make a relatively thin crust. So um, I'm gonna stop rambling and move on with my day and I will see you guys in a couple of hours. Okay, here we go. 
Are you ready to see the rise? No? Was that too much? I feel like that was just right. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Sometimes I try to be entertaining and it doesn't always land. So here is my dough. We are going to, I mean, they call it punching it down. I'm just, you know, eh, eh, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna dust my board. I had to flip it over because it had those ridges and I didn't think that I was gonna be able to roll it out big enough. There we go. I don't wanna over flower it, but I also don't want the dough to stick. So I want half, I'm just gonna use my pizza cutter. There we go, that looks good. Layers. Making my ball. That's it. Um, I'm gonna take a little flower on my hand, dust my roller, and we just wanna roll it into a nice, flat, round shape that will cover my pizza screen. So I'm just gonna work it in the different directions. I'll flip it over if I need to. I am not a pizza connoisseur maker, professional dough tosser. Like I've never once tried to do, let's try this and see how it goes. Like it's supposed to stretch it, I don't know. Like I know there's ways to do this and I've tried it before. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of disastrous. But let's try and see where we get. Cause they start to get thin spots and I'm sure there's like special ways to do this but I haven't spent my time learning how to do that. So let's just try a few different things. I've always just rolled it, so I was curious. So I mean, why not try it on camera? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, then we're getting somewhere. Maybe it just needed that elasticity tossed out of it. Um, and one of the things you can do, I think this is a 13 inch screen. We're gonna measure it very scientifically here. Not quite. Just keep going. I don't want super thin crust, but I don't really care for the really thick crust either. Um, so I try to go for somewhere in the middle and hope that I land something that resembles appropriate. Okay. Did you see that? I didn't see the what? Who did that? <laughs> oh my goodness, keep rolling, Michelle. Just keep rolling. Keep rolling the dough. All right, that looks nice. It's really even, um, which is one of the things I want when I'm rolling out my dough, is I'd like the, the thickness to be pretty consistent all the way across. I'm gonna check it one more time. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir, yes, whoever you would like to be, it's good. Um, I'm going to take my avocado oil, I'm going to hold this over the sink. Why am I doing that? All the holes. If I don't hold it over the sink, whatever doesn't hit the screen is going to go through it and make a big mess. Pardon me. Okay, that is done. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my... The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pizza docker. Remember we talked about this in the beginning and you just roll it across the dough. And the reason you want to dock your pizza dough is so that it doesn't have these big old bubbles and then your sauce and your to um, toppings fall off. Um, you could do this with a fork. Stab it with a fork all over the place. You don't have a pizza docker. Um, I think they're five to ten dollars depending on which one you get. Okay, now here comes the tricky part. You want to get it onto your screen without tearing it, getting it folded onto itself, over stretching. It just takes some practice and patience. Again, not a professional pizza maker, but I do my best. This is something that we do. I think I mentioned this in um, one of my other prep episodes. Maybe it was my pizza sauce? Pizza sauce. Um, that we do this in my house every Saturday night with few exceptions. And then after we've made our homemade pizza, we watch a family movie. And it's really, it's just really good quality time. Okay, now we've got it and you can see some of it is right perfectly just around the red, the edge and a little bit's overlapping. So I just wanna take that extra um, and just cut it off. You can do this with a regular knife. You can do this with your 
pizza roller. It's not looking very pretty, but it is what it is. Again, I'm not a professional chef. I keep telling you guys that, and you keep watching. Unless you're new. Welcome. <laughs> okay, keep going here. I'm just trying to get it so that it's somewhat even without a big, huge extra press. Here we go. All right. Okay, I'm gonna take this little ball and add it to this just in case. That's my oven. Which leads me to my next video. Um, I am going to wrap this one up as is, and then I'm gonna make the pizza. So I've made the house-made sausage. I've made the homemade pizza sauce from scratch. Now I've made the dough. Coming up next will be the um, pizza itself, putting everything together. Why do I do it separately like that? Well, not everybody wants to make the crust themselves or the sauce themselves. They just want to do that last step of getting the ingredients together that they've purchased and then making the pizza, and that's all they wanna watch. Um, but for the people who do wanna do the crust and things, I wanna make sure that they get their videos too. So I'm just trying to make everybody happy um, by splitting up the videos that way, um, especially for things like the sourdough pizza crust, because that one you have to do days in advance. Um, and so to go back and find the spot you were watching, it's not always convenient. So I'm gonna wrap this up, then we're gonna move on to making the actual pizza in my next video. Thanks for joining me here today. I hope you've enjoyed it. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy puppy.